Hey guys, welcome to season two, episode two of the Unshakable Man podcast and community for men who want to connect, heal, and grow. Not just for the benefit of ourselves, but for the, our, the benefit of everyone and everything. My name is Chris Wilson. I'm the founder of the Unshakable Man podcast and studio, and I'm in here today with my friend and guest, Dr. Chris Spromberg. Hey, man. How's it going? Hey, hey buddy. It's so good. It's so good to join you. So we're uh, we're catching you in the hospital today, right? Yeah, this is uh, my office out of, uh, out of a little local hospital I work at here in uh, rural Montana. Awesome. Awesome. So if we if we get any knocks on the door or if any emergencies happen, I just want to invite that in uh, to help you feel more comfortable being here. I appreciate. But uh, that. So thank, thank you, man. It's always it's always happening around here. So and I stay pretty busy, but I'm, I'm well, hoping to carve um, out the time to be present with you. So, hmm, dude, that that feels good. I um. I wanted to just say, like, first and foremost, man, uh, I I really appreciate uh, for the the time, the energy, the awareness, and the willingness to share um, that you have uh, brought to me, uh, to my own practice, and to the the Unshakable Man community over the past year. Um, I uh, I'm, I'm sensing the want to pause right there, but at the same time, for for anyone who's listening to this. Uh, Chris and I uh, have not met in person yet, but yet I feel like a, a, a brother of his. Uh, we got to co-facilitate the Unshakable Man cohort for at uh, the end of last year and got to spend three months together holding space and bringing men on this transformational journey, learning self-leadership skills, how to drop in, how to hold space, uh, how to let go of any and all emotions. And... Uh, and this topic of, of the man box, uh, he and I, uh, Chris, I, I think you did your PhD uh, thesis in, in the topic of masculinity and shame. Am yeah, I right? Yeah, close. I got a PsyD degree, but yeah, it's a doctorate uh, similar to the PhD. And uh, my focus on my thesis was around masculinity and, and shame, which is basically the underpinnings with the man box. Oh, I love it. So thank you for bringing in the man box. And, and today, today's episode two, and it's this topic of the man box, which is just this gig, this gigantic topic. And I want, I want to make sure that we preface here today that we're going to be talking about uh, a topic that not only have you done an immense amount of work on your own, but we're talking about subjects that uh, we are going to likely be talking about again and again here on the podcast uh, and I, I'd like to bring this in as as a pillar topic for men to become aware of, which is the man box itself. And before we get started, I, I just wanted to like jump in with some some questions that I'd love to cover today. Yeah. Like, what is the man box? What puts a man in? What factors put a man in the man box? Why is it even a problem to be in the man box? How does the man box affect others? How do things change when a man gets out of the man box? And how do guys get out of the man box? And like, why are we even talking about this? We have an hour, right? <laughs> yeah, we got an hour. <laughs> Great, because there's whole, like, you can take a college class on some of this. Um, and maybe yeah. someday we'll do that. But yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll dive. We'll, we'll dive as much as we can in, into that. Uh, I was just reflecting back. It was like a year ago, taking a lunch break, sitting in the space, connecting with you on this and how both like our personal experiences and our work, you know, with men um, just resonated with us um, to really better place this and understand um, these, these theories and ways of understanding the work in our own experiences that really connected and brought us together. So it's fun to be like sitting in the same spot on my lunch break with you again, getting to yeah to really connect, which is what we've enjoyed the most and have done, even though we physically haven't met. Yeah, totally agree. So, so Chris, like, what what is the man box? Yeah. So it's this idea that masculinity and what it means to be a man is something that has been 
socially constructed in American society. Specifically, we're talking about American society. Mm -hmm. um, and it's these ideals, right? This, this kind of box of when we say, like, what does it mean to be a man, right? Mm -hmm. Talking about definitions that fit within the box. Mm -hmm. But these definitions are socially constructed, right? They're a role that society has kind of assigned to men, people kind of assigned male at birth, right? Mm -hmm. Means what it means for these people to how to engage and interact and what's expected to them in the, in our culture. I love I I really appreciate when you say uh, they are socially constructed mm -hmm. and they are assigned to us, right? It's 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 and for me it's it's becoming aware of that there is a culture of manhood yeah. that I am a part of. Yeah, and we all learn. Right. It's a it's a learn it's assigned to us and we learn our role, just like we learn our our lines in a play. So why why is the uh why is the man box even a problem? Like I mean, in some ways it to be honest with you, Chris, it isn't. Right? Okay. Um, yeah. um we kind of all learn the roles and it's been adaptive in a lot of ways, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. We also we've we we've seen the consequences yeah. of of this what has become like a, a very narrowly and rigidly defined box mm -hmm. of what it means to be a man. I I appreciate like even when I ask that question like why is it a problem, and you come back and you're like what well in a lot of ways it's not and that really relates to me between this disc what we review every time we start a group of uh within the unshakable man of there are no good or bad emotions yeah. there's only constructive or destructive reactions right mm -hmm. or as you and i will often say there's only acceptable and not acceptable emotions and so there's a constructive and, and a destructive consequence to this box there's a lot of adaptive positive qualities that come from this box but it's becoming aware that you that there is a box yeah that you're in yeah and like i think maybe we start by kind of like defining the box a little bit more right yeah let's do it like traditionally in in the culture um and maybe we just kind of riff back and forth a little bit like we're using a big paintbrush here right i i like to use the caveats of like traditionally and historically in our culture what has it meant to to be a man right like what right. what who like what defines like masculinity, manliness in our culture? Uh, provider. Mm -hmm. uh, s stoic, like kind of um, unswayed by emotions. Yeah, uh, yeah, not emotional. Mm -hmm. uh, Unless it's anger. I have, yeah, I'd have like uh, athletic mm -hmm. um, or, or, or fit, strong, like yeah. physically strong. Yeah. Uh, I would say like, um, like always achieving, right? Like if you're not mm. moving up the ladder, are you yep. really a man? Like, or if you're not in leadership? Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, the breadwinner, right? Mm. Like this idea that you are the one that, that brings home the bacon. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, the hunter, the gatherer, mm. the, the one that goes out, uh, the protector. Sorry. Now I'm getting on a roll. The protector, oh, like, right. uh, like protecting the, the the group protecting women yeah. protecting people who are weaker than you mm -hmm. uh there's also like the sexual conquest okay the yeah see yeah. out yeah. sexual activities especially with women right uh-huh uh, yeah the yeah. Uh, the term comes to mind notching the belt yep yeah and so that so here so here we're crafting these th these terms these these general ideas of what it means to be a man mm -hmm. right and so i'm i'm getting this picture of myself as a young man in uh, at 17 18 years old uh, i'm also thinking about all of the movies i would watch that would tell me what it meant to be a man yeah. unconsciously yeah. right i'm thinking about the role of disney and cartoons mm -hmm. uh, i'm thinking about the role of instagram right six pack abs yeah. uh uh right and and how uh like body, my body shaming, right? Like feeling like if my body doesn't fit in with what it looks like to be a muscular uh, physique of a man, 
right? Becoming, um, uh, and with sexual conquest, you have like penis, penis size, yeah, right? Yeah. Like aggressiveness with your partner uh, or hunting women down, right? Like, like being yeah. a player. So we've all seen like these, this box, like in archetypes played out in lots right. of, like lots of avenues, lots of like uh, media and right. content. Right. And so we kind of like, uh, we all know, them, right. We all kind of know the, um, or feel the expectation, right. This is also like the, you know, the grade school playground, right. right. Or the, the middle school locker room. Boys don't cry. Right. Like, uh, boys bedrooms are blue girls. Bedrooms are pink. Yeah. Right. Like, like this, like, right. Uh, so I, I feel like we're getting, we're, what I'm, what I'm appreciating here is that, um, in this moment is that like, we all know this. Uh, but I think the point that I, that I'm be, that's becoming more concrete for me and, and, and what, what is important to bring in here for the listener or for men who, or anyone who is, who's listening to this is that this, this has, uh, uh, that this is a part of our, so much a part of our culture that we might reject it, right? Like I am not a part of that. This isn't how I am, but I actually have to reject it. Like I, as a human being or a person who identifies as male, I actually have to like earn either. I, I feel like manhood, it needs to be earned or I have to fight to be in there yeah. and to stay in there. Yeah. Or somehow if I, if I even choose not to, mm-hmm. I'm somehow removing myself. Yeah. I'm somehow not being that, that yeah. thing. I often say, Chris, like we all were like explicitly told these things. Like if you fall as a little kid, like, I mean, the stereotype is like, oh, you're fine. Get up. Right. Don't cry. Right. Right. We, it's explicitly right. told to us, but also right. just the way, like, you know, the, the images have been sold to us. Right. Or just like even feeling right. Like we internally know this, even if I kind of like, oh, I don't subscribe to that. I don't have to be macho. We still feel that pressure sometimes. And that, and that is the creepiness. Like that's the, that's the existential kink. That's the paradox to manage here. That's the thing that is so pervasive. Mm-hmm. Um, you have, uh, and then, and then just in my mind, things pop in like feminism, me too, wanting to be a good man, like yeah. wanting to like, wanting to, to not be this other kind of man that it, that the media has portrayed right? But then being labeled some other kind of man, right? Like being, being, I I remember for me, uh, early in my, early in my twenties, somebody, somebody called me and another friend, um, metrosexual, right? And, and I, and I'm like, what? I had never heard that term before. Right. And, and I just like, was like, what, what? You're speaking to like, the consequences. Right. Right. Uh, and so like our culture has, like we mentioned before, really kind of narrowly and rigidly defined the idea of what it's, what it means to be a man. Right. Mm-hmm. We're all human beings. And um, as a human being, I have emotions and sadness, mm-hmm. but if that's not manliness and I experience those things, I fall outside of that box. Okay. So like right there, I'm a human being, I have emotions, and now I fall outside of that box, which means I'm violating it, mm-hmm. right? So I'm I'm somehow not being this thing to even just have emotions. Yeah. Right? Like a human and so, experience. Right. Yeah. Right. And I think that that's where this this started to crystallize for me over the past 5 years was spending time more time with all different all different men types of men who identify as male and yet they uh realizing that we all exist and deal with these violations yeah. of the man box yeah and, and we all like every guy knows the experience of falling outside of the man box right you get mm-hmm. called names right mm-hmm. or sometimes it's even like physical consequences right yeah so you get called yeah. names, metrosexual, right? 
don't be a what? Yes. Don't be a... Yeah. Right? All yeah. these, like... Don't... I'll say some that uh, like not not sitting in your office as a, a, don't be a sissy, don't be yeah. a fag, mm -hmm. don't be gay, don't be uh, uh, don't be a mama's boy, don't be um, uh, a weakling, yeah. right? Like toughen up, uh, man up, yeah. right? And this whole this whole uh, culture of and the, and the, the wild thing is is how even as i say those things right like when you when you said like oh come on get up give it another try as as an athlete and as a young man who found purpose in 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 athletic like spaces mm -hmm. uh there's a constructive quality to that no you can do this like give it another try right yeah really and great team, great or good qualities right exactly but there's this there there's this thing that i think we like and there's a reason why we're here and this is the second episode right is it's it's this shame right like and and so i i'll tee this one up for you rather like what what is the role of shame then in in the man box. Yeah. So what we see is when you fall outside of this narrowly, rigidly defined box, right? And like we said before, like in some ways it's adaptive, right? That that pressure to like get up and try again, that's a good thing, right? But mm -hmm. we when we kind of continue to force that and disconnect from emotions, we've seen consequences. Right? From right. this this level of rigidity around masculinity. I don't like calling it toxic masculinity. I just call, mm -hmm. like to call it really rigid masculinity that has had consequences, right? Right, because I mean, like when you talk about when we even say the term toxic masculinity, there's a whole population of 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 people who then look at it. Are you telling me that masculinity is bad? And it's like that in and of itself with today in the blogosphere, yeah. right? Like, right? We are we're we're picking up these terms and then we're othering. A group of human beings and saying like the way you are being like you are or they were saying that you are bad yeah. right we're nouning them versus they're a verb that's the way you're being yeah so there you go right? you just teed me up for the shame piece right you okay. are bad is the definition of shame you are not enough not good enough right mm. so when i fall outside of the box right i have human experience that isn't doesn't fall within this masculine box I get called names like don't be a sissy right and that mm -hmm. what that does is puts pressure on the man outside of the box to then be back in the box so you have to over express your manhood you have to touch yeah <laughs> you have to over express your manhood yeah you have to then prove your masculinity right by fitting yes. back in the box one of the easiest ways to do that is through physical prowess right punch that person in the face. Then I've shown my physical aggression. I've proven my masculinity that even though I have emotions, I can still punch you in the face and look, I'm a man. Right. But what all of this is doing is just perpetuating this. Like what you talked about with like using toxic is you're not being man enough, right? Not being mm -hmm. enough. You're not good enough. And so this whole masculinity is, is policed by using shame. And shame is the emotion that says, if I told somebody what I did or what happened, I won't be allowed in the tribe. Yeah, I'm not good enough. Or to that be you're, in. you're not good enough to be in, right? And so, what I, what I notice is that within our spaces and within our communities, is that vulnerability is uh, from the outside, is that. Uh, I have routinely seen messages, evidence, heard from other men anecdotally that uh, being vulnerable is considered weak. Yeah. Even from other right? women, right? It's not just men right. policing this box. It's also women. It's cultural. Right. And yet, when we don't feel emotions, when we disconnect, when we harden, I think the connection that I, I, I want to make for future shows here uh, and, and that we're going to go deeper into is this, we're, we're disconnecting from the experience of our life. Yeah. Right. 
Like we're disconnecting from the felt sense of well-being in our body. Mm-hmm. And then that sends me out. I think what I, what I, the connection I'm making in like the, the aggressiveness, right? The proving of my masculinity. One, it's one thing to punch someone, but it's this whole other adaptive side of things that um, is like needing to be a certain title, needing to, to achieve a certain job, right? Like having to have these aggressive big goals in order to just be okay with yourself. Yeah. Right. Mm, Being okay, not being okay. Yeah. And, and so that to me is what I've, I've even started to call like empty connection syndrome. Right. And it creates this like brittle quality of our life experience where we're like constantly in anxiety, constantly feeling tense. If I'm not doing something, I'm not, I'm nothing. Like I am my roles of the things that I do. Right. Yeah, and we're often uh, pulling back from shame uh, is a disengagement. Right. We pull back mm. then because I'm afraid of making the wrong move of, of losing the man card right? Not fitting in the Mm. box. And so Hmm. by pulling back, then it's harder than to connect with others, right? We lose, yeah, we lose authenticity, right? In, in just avoidance of vulnerability. So am I, am I in the man box no matter what? Hmm. That's a great question, right? It's a socially defined role and also a a, a personally defined role too. Yeah. I I think my, my hope and what I always talk about in my work with men is to not, not get rid of the man box. Like even in my relationship, there's things that I value in within the man box and in, in feeling some pride around being the provider. Right. I like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but how do I not uh, not use that to define being a man? Right. I I you know just riffing with you here, Chris. Like mm-hmm. I just as I asked that question, um, it there's it's just this this it, this realization and this. Um, uh, this isn't a new realization, but right now, you know, I, th- I think I was like up in my head in terms of, of trying, right? Like trying to have to articulate this subject. But the second that I asked you that question, there was the, the felt sense of, um, I am, I, I exist in this culture, yeah. right? But what I see happening in community, mm-hmm. right? Is that like, if I look at you, if I, when I judge you, Right, like you have a beard, uh, you're you're you've got collared shirt on, right? Like there's things that I know of you, and I make all of these judgments of what who I think you are, right? And I'll just say like tough, intelligent, right? Like strong, right? And 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 yet I don't know your heart, mm-hmm. right? I don't. You haven't been vulnerable in that moment, like when I'm judging you, and. What I think I I noticed in that question is that this is why having physical real world experiences with a group of another men of other men not by not by how what we're interested in right like not about being a better athlete and being in a men's group that's like ah like like we're gonna go out and identify with this culture of being tough and perpetuate that but by simply gathering in community in a circle and in opening our heart and taking that safe risk of vulnerability to to open our heart and to say what is true what is hidden right i have a physical experience like i i get to get get to have that that intimacy with another man and then realize how much that story in my head is is does not match up with what I thought was there, what I was unconscious of, and that that to me changes me on the inside. Yeah, that's such a scary ask, though, when we take a look at the man box. 
it's all those things you're asking to slow down, to feel, to allow like deep connection, especially with another man. Mm -hmm. Right. Traditionally that has been, no, you don't do that. You're okay. You pull yourself up by your bootstraps, figure this out on your own. Don't, uh, don't Mm -hmm. let others in. Right. And so that's a scary, that's a scary ask. And that, that is why I think that this work is so courageous, right? It is such, it is such a powerful, incredible choice for men to explore this and to take that step, right? Right. To come into a men's group, to show up on a Tuesday night, right? At a, at a in-person group in your neighborhood or your city, or to come and join online to join one of our men's groups, right? And to, to show up in a Zoom meeting and you don't know, right? Like there, there's an immense like, yeah. whoa, like, yeah. It's, and it, it's going yeah. against the grain of what I've been told is what's appropriate for me and safe. Because when I've stepped outside of that, I, there's been consequences. Yeah. And I often say like, well, well, this isn't always explicit, right? We don't go, you don't point at people and say, you're outside of the man box. Shame, shame. Like in maybe medieval right. days, we don't actually just yell <laughs> shame at people. But it's, yeah. like a, it's, a, it's a physically felt known experience of, oh, if I show up, Right. And I actually share mm-hmm. like how I'm struggling. Right. Other guys are going to judge me and that's shame. Right. Right. And yet we see this proliferation of, of men working against that, right. Having conversations like this, uh, uh, opening up that man box, opening up what it, the traditional sense of what it means to be a man and creating opportunities and experiences to be able to broaden that, that right. And deepen that. Yeah. And that's, those are the terms I always use for the man box. It's not to dismantle it. Right. Okay. But how do we, how do we broaden what's, what it means to be a man? Can it encompass more human being experiences? And still yeah. be able to identify as a man, right? And and own some pieces and, and hopefully let let go of some others like that don't need to define my manhood. Being strong doesn't mm-hmm. define my manhood. And still be a, mm-hmm. a man and, and struggle with weakness. Right? But also I can be a man and, and 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 struggle with my mental health and have feelings and also be a provider in my relationship. Yeah. I, I'm just playing the devil's advocate here, but I'm like, why? Like, why, why, if, if I'm, I'm like listening to this right now and I'm, you know, I, I'm in a relationship, uh, with, with a man or a woman, I'm, I have kids, I don't have kids, I have a job, I don't have a job. Um, I'm, I'm sitting here listening to this. It's like, why, why show up and do that? And you know, I can't always answer everyone's why, but generally in my why and a lot of guys that I've talked to is at some point, like you lose track of the bootstraps and you can't do it on your own anymore. And you feel <laughs> that, that emptiness and that loneliness of like, I'm tired of doing it on my own. And that's been a really common yeah. experience for myself so many men I talk to is at some point um, doing it on your own it gets really lonely yeah and as as you say that I for me as a tw- like 10 years ago as a as a 28 year old like young man I didn't define of having anxiety at all. I, I didn't think there was an issue at all and then had a massive anxiety attack, mm. which opened me up to the realization that I had been suppressing and repressing and use and had that aggressive relationship with achievement and which was I had all of these constructive things like like societal things like great job, right? Yeah. Like I was a goal oriented guy who could get the job done. And yet when I when I think about 
the the quality of my life, I wasn't aware of what I wasn't aware of, mm-hmm. right? And I think that that's the the message to me to to men and and uh, is that like we we are having an experience of our life and and that experience is physical it's not it's not in our head and if it is in our head it means we're disconnected from our body mm-hmm. right and and that this work it opens us up to being able to experience more of our life like more joy more peacefulness right like yeah. sure more intensity at times but also just more interconnectedness yeah right yeah absolutely and we're seeing like i like we mentioned earlier right we're seeing consequences of adherence in this rigid box right um, mental health rates for for men are, are significantly increasing especially around suicidality we don't see you know guys reaching out and getting help because that's not part of the box is asking for help Right. We're seeing more men like Do you have do you have a list of uh, uh 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 of things right there in front of you that you're holding back from just listing off cuz yeah. I would love it if you just go through those. Yeah. There's a few of them here. Let me find them real quick. Um cuz I have them in a couple different spots. But while while you do that, I guess for me it's this um it it, it for for men who are listening to this and it's it, it's wild to appreciate how much in these conversations I am routinely wanting to simply say all human beings, mm. because this isn't just about people who identify as male. It's not just for people who identify as female that we are existing. It's becoming aware of the fact that we exist in a culture, right? And that culture has created these cultural pressures that are produced by shame and that yes people uh, women deal with pressures and men deal with these pressures but i think speaking to where we are right now in the zeitgeist right within north america is is that we are being asked as men to open right and to uh to handle uh, a much more nuanced way of being as a man and that this traditional box is it's killing us right like it's sending us it's we're getting more uh, do you have you have yeah, them now i got you awesome i got you this perfect awesome. tea up there right we're uh, we're seeing yeah. um a significant portion like especially in utilization like of healthcare, right even just asking for help and getting health i've been a victim of this and i work in the healthcare system of you don't go to the doctor until you have a list of like five things wrong, right? Mm-hmm. And so we see like uh, 33% of men have like no regular doctor that they go to or check in with when they're sick or seek medical advice from, right? Uh, men make up 55% of the workforce accidents, um, but account for 92 of all workplace deaths, right? So we're, we're engaging in, in more deadly jobs, but also more risky behaviors, right? We have also seen like this adherence to kind of like toughness and violence, improving the masculinity and, and, and amping, amping up the kind of masculine behaviors come out in violence, right? 86% of all armed robberies are committed by men. 77% of all aggravated assault are committed by men. 87% of stalkers are men. Uh, 99% of rapes are committed by men. Men commit approximately 90% of murder in our country, right? We often lose this statistic in all of the school shootings, but 99% of those are young boys, right? It's not about the, the, the weapon of choice. It's about the, the male in this choosing right. to engage, right? And then we also see this in, in, in mental health too, where men continue to lead the statistic in, in, in suicide rates. Yeah. It's just devastating. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a man box and we're in it. Yeah. Whether or not we like it or not. Yeah. There's a cultural ideal of what it means to be a man, but historically, while it's been adaptive for some guys, right. Um, mm-hmm. it helped us, you know, get through life. 
there's also been significant consequences of really kind of holding tight to that man box and how narrowly it's defined. Yeah. So, so then what is like, I guess for the second half here, like what is our big message then? Yeah, it's, it's engagement. What do you mean by engagement? Well, I'm even thinking of, um, my morning this morning. And getting getting to meet a young man who came in to see his his primary care physician um, because he's he's been struggling with pretty severe anxiety that has led to thoughts of suicide and he he literally said to me this morning like I I've ran out of bootstraps I don't know how to bootstrap this one and my boss said to go see my doctor there's no shame in getting mental health or mental help um, yeah, there's no but that shame. Requires and getting exactly. mental health help. Yeah. Yeah. But that requires yeah. moving past the discomfort of asking for help because that may negate my manhood, right? Mm-hmm. And so I have to I have to engage. I have to move past the the discomfort of showing up and being vulnerable, saying, "Hey, I'm struggling." Or I I'm not doing good or I'm lonely or, Hey, I'm doing okay, but really like I'm losing people around me. When you, when you say that, right? Like, like when you, when you bring in this image of, okay, engage, right. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the things that I notice over the past five years of being in, and I pick five years, not 10, because the first, for me, from my, since my opening, I was aware of this needing to engage, but I didn't know how Yeah, I did. It took, it took time to learn and to, to be around other human beings who had gone deeper than me. And I think this is one of the biggest things that, uh, like almost like a mission that I see in in communities like the Unshakable Man is that the reason why these communities exist is because we learn these skills in physical relationship with other human beings, yeah. right? And that they're that like when I'm in crisis and I'm walking in to be with Doctor Spromberg, like. Uh, that's that's you might have 30 minutes you might have an hour right of being with this man mm-hmm. right but the reality is is that's that's a crisis moment mm-hmm. right like we're now we're now at a point where we're actually stopping the bleeding yeah. we're not talking about thriving no right yeah. we're not talking about about going deeper into the wounds mm-hmm. that are inside the places inside that we've covered over unconsciously not knowing to just survive to get to where we are today mm-hmm. right and the ability to do that in therapy just to play the devil's advocate where i'm like with one other therapist the job of the therapist the ability the chance encounter of that therapist making a personal connection with me that just meets right where the two flowers open and together at the same time, right? Like that, that's so, that's such a like incredible opportunity, right? To have that, that occur. And so I, I know I'm going off on this, this tangent, but what I, I guess like what I see is that it, it, the power of these circles, the power of being in community with a group of other human beings who identify as male is that I'm just going to say it over and over again. Right. And like, because the, the dude that was, uh, that was 22 years old who needed this, Mm -hmm. he would have never said that. No, absolutely. I would have never said identifies as male. Yeah. Right. Like Mm -hmm. it, it, and, and, and yet, like ha- being in that space for, I'm just going to pick a number, three months, 12 times, 12 hours together, let's say 12 hours, or, or right? Yeah. Even that infinitesimally blip on the radar of an experience, what I have seen is that it changes us on the inside. Yeah. We learn right? who we are in relationship to others. Period. And especially Period. in an environment where you can 
get different like a different relationship and see that like oh i can learn that i can show up and be vulnerable and and not be shamed for it man what a powerful and corrective experience yes and that i think is why we need to have this with people who are not our friends mm -hmm. which is another thing that i think we i see out here all the time i constantly in the in the mental health space, you know the the blogosphere, the the manosphere out there, yeah. that's like, oh, learn how to go deeper with your your buddies, and that 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 makes sense. That that I like good, like that that's great, but that's just the surface level to me. What act where you actually get the biggest impact is when you step out of your friend community, mm -hmm. you step out of your relationship, and you invest in yourself. And you say, I'm going to go into this thing that scares me. I'm going to join a men's group and I'm going to give this a try. Yeah. Right. And, Just you, like and any, it changes you. Sorry, Chris. Just like any no. other skill though, right? Like if I wanted to learn to downhill ski, right? And I knew nobody right. else, I'm not going to get together with my buddies and we're going to boot up and ride the tall lift and go down the black diamond. Right. Right. I need to, right. I need to go around and, and go with people and start small who know how to ski and can show me the way. Right. Right. But the, but the challenge that you and I are dealing with in this conversation and that uh, anyone who's listening to this is dealing with, I think, is that we have the mental emotional construct of, uh, of that. Um, I only need this when something's wrong. Yeah. Right. So you're being brought into this, from uh, from a heart attack in your life or a car accident in your life, right? Mm -hmm. So your life is bringing you into this space. Your relationships are breaking down. You're lonely. You're depressed. You're anxious, right? That's one way in. But then there's this whole other avenue into this of I actually want to learn new skills. I want to become that person who can surf through their life and actually not just benefit myself, but benefit others. And I think that that comes back to what I said at the very beginning, right? Like a, a podcasting community for men who want to connect, heal, and grow, not just for the benefit of ourselves, but for the benefit of everyone and everything, right? Yeah. Like this work really change, changes how we experience our, our entire life. Yeah deeper and more like broader connections right to mm -hmm. myself and others it just it amplifies the experience of going through what is a really challenging life in lots of ways right and yeah. it doesn't have to be alone it doesn't have to be solo it can be right deeply connected with others going through this challenge of life yeah. I think that that's what probably been one of the most interesting things about being in these groups and at the last cohort with you yeah. was um, I heard so many times in the cohort uh, for, for men specifically that I'm thinking of that came back to me after and said, um, I thought I had, I wished I had my friends here with me. Mm -hmm. And then um, like during the sign up process, these guys were wanting to invite their friends to come be a part of the cohort and their friends didn't come. And it, the, the, that topic, when they connected on that, they, it, it, I think one man probably said it. And then three other men were like, Oh, me too. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I wanted my buddy to come be a part of this mm -hmm. and he didn't do it. Yeah. Right. And yet I think what ha what I notice, like what what's coming back in that's relevant for this conversation, is that I think um, there is an incredibly high stakes quality to a friendship, mm -hmm. right? Like that I'm friendship is so special. It's such a special choice type of relationship, and that on one end we want this person to be our friend. And so we don't show up as who we really are, right? Like we withhold and we try to keep them, mm -hmm. right? Like, like if I, if I step out of that box and what was so interesting in the cohort was to hear these guys 
complain at the beginning or share how sad they were that, ah, you know, I wish my friend had signed up for this. And yeah. then they all connected on it. But then by the end, all of them were like, wait, I'm actually really happy that I did this. And I totally understand and can empathize with why my friend didn't come in here. Yeah. Because maybe he was scared to be there. And it lets us be explore. It lets us see who we are in a new way without our friends. Yeah. But then we go back into those relationships Chris, changed. You often say like we're we're not creating a a, a safe place, but a brave or a, a place. Of, go ahead. A brave. Yeah, we're not creating a safe space. We're creating a brave space. Yeah. Yeah. And I think. Yeah. I think that speaks to. Yeah, I'd love my friend to come because that would help ease this this fear that I have of entering into unknown, right? And vulnerability of, I don't know what's going to come and how am I going to be able to adapt? So let's have someone come in, right? But then the mm -hmm. value of being able to say like, no, look, I showed up. Like I did that even without the, the support, right? Of having a buddy who I know there. Um, and just the value of like, no, you did it, right? You were able to show up and be brave in a space that's asking you to go against the grain of what you initially have been told you and felt your whole life of don't show weakness, right? Don't be vulnerable. Don't be authentic mm -hmm. and emotional. Right. Yeah. And the value that comes it's... from like entering into that vulnerability and coming out the other side, seeing like, it's okay. Yeah. So what, if we if we use the the final minutes here of our conversation to just reflect back, mm -hmm. what do you think is the most important takeaway for men or for anybody listening to this? I'm gonna have to get used to that. Like to, for anyone <laughs> listening to this, but for men specifically, what what it what do you think is the the biggest takeaway? For me, it's just been like especially that last piece that so much of the box has has not felt congruent with who I want to be in the values that I, I want to hold. I want to be authentic and I want to show others that it's okay to not be okay and to have emotions and, and, and feel sadness, right? And to be able to, to be sad and express that and, um, and still identify as a man and, and, and hold some you know traditional masculine and masculinity uh, and values but can we open up that box can we broaden it and and pull the shame away from from like the the hard definitions right the hard rigid, yeah. rigid walls of this box and allow like vulnerability to be a masculine experience right we can be vulnerable and still be a, a man Mm -hmm. And that as we do that, then we're creating more space for connection. Creating more space for connection. Yeah. It's, for me, uh, it's this realization. Um, everybody has talked about connection. I, I feel like this word connection, like being connected or disconnected is, um, I hear it. I hear it all the time. Like, do you do you feel connected or disconnected to your life, to your job, to your relationships, to the to my the felt sense in my body? Uh, and for me, it's um, it's becoming aware of this culture of manhood that I exist in. Right. That that. It's, it's almost like just tearing off the goggles and seeing my life and relationships in a new way. Yep. And then, and then discovering that I actually need to go out and have a physical experience. Like I, I can't, I can't just do this on my own. I can't do this just in my journal. I can't just do this uh, in my head or, or by reading a book that I, having a physical experience, right? Like actually joining a group, a men's group has just completely changed the way that I show up with myself in my life. Mm. And, and then from that, 
has then extended outward into how I respond to everyone and everything that I come into relationship with. And when you and I have these conversations about Jungian psychology, right, when we talk about uh, spirituality, uh, when we talk about intimacy and connection with our important other, uh, our beloved, right, or a relationship with, uh, with source, with mother nature, with uh, the divine, with God of your own choosing, it's absolutely, um, it's like mind blowing to me that we started over here with this uh, rigidity and this topic of, of, of the man box and this culture of manhood that's been brought to me uh, really like that, like you've in conversation with you and uh, about and be in, and practice together in the, in cohorts um, and with men in our space that there's just this like, I know I'm going on and on, but this like culture, like Instagram movies, commercials, uh, it's, it's pervasive. It's, it's just incredibly different yeah. than, than what you, you talk about. And I, and you alluded to it where you said to me, to when you said, um, I still want to, I don't want to dismantle the whole box. Like I still really want to hold on to some qualities Right, yeah. but you gotta go on this journey as a as a human being, almost like out of society as you know it, and you know that reminds me of the hero's journey. Yeah, like, I often think like, how do I move from like feeling challenged? Right, I think maybe a lot of guys might hear this and hear us wanting to challenge what it means to be a man in our culture. Right. Yeah, and that challenge then usually kind of results in doubling down. Right. Well, no, this is what it means to be a man. Man should be the breadwinner winner. And we should like, right. Right. We should, tighten uh, up. You know, like, yeah. Be in charge. Right. Uh, yeah. We should hold emotions off to the side. So there's like this doubling down and almost like white knuckling of, of this yeah. idea of what it means to be a man. And my hope isn't to say like, no, none of those should be manly. Right. My hope is to say, like, how do we, like, how do we hold them with an open hand, right? Mm-hmm. I can't, I can be in, in charge, and in some ways here in in, in my work setting, yeah, I uh, people kind of answer to to me, right? But I don't, I don't white knuckle that. I don't need that to be a part of my identity and holding on, right? Mm-hmm. As yeah. there's like a weird BB now. Uh, it's okay. okay. We're in the hospitals together. Yeah. The uh, I I really I'll just make I'll come in with there on the hard way versus the open way mm. of that point that you're making, of um of for me this it's in in moving through these experiences uh, and opening up to 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 more of the wholeness of who I really am am as a as a human being as a, as a man. Um, it's it's realizing that it's it's not about these reactions or the it, that it's that it's the way I'm being mm-hmm. right and what I noticed in there is you 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 squeezed your fist you tightened your body and that that is a reaction right and and that when I do that I reinforce this story in my head I hold on to something and it's it's a fear response yeah. right. And and fear is the mind killer, right? I then construct all of these these walls in my life to hold myself off, and then my perception of my life and my reality frames around that, right? Like, oh, it's bad to do this, or men shouldn't do that. And what we're actually doing in practice in these spaces is slowing ourselves down, right? We're getting out of our heads and our egoic patterns. And we're lear- we're learning to create a space where uh, any and all emotions can be present. Yeah. But Chris, I I'll take that as a message to to let you get back into the flow, the river of life in the hospital. But thank you so much, man. Thank you so much for just taking time uh, out of your busy schedule at the hospital, and uh, and for bringing like your just just going through this experience with me and the men in the unshakable man community over the past year. Yeah. Again, thank you, Chris. But also it's like, you know, after, after wrestling with this, 
right? Like, I don't like to say I'm, I'm at, at, at conclusions, right? I, I've put my doctoral like studies and thesis behind this and, and, and been in my own work and therapy and in men's groups. Um, I still continue to wrestle with this and have questions and, and trying to figure out this balance of like identifying as a man and but also wanting to open up that box to in, in, encompass more more human experiences. Uh, really what it comes down to is just valuing the connection. And the, and the way I get to do that is by, by being vulnerable and opening up these parts uh, of myself that uh, struggled to do that when I was younger based on all the things I had learned about what it meant to be a man in our culture. So I, I always just, like I value the time to, to get to just sit and be and, and, and be messy with alarms happening be messy with making, you know, uh, speaking mistakes and saying, um, and like too much, probably and that's, that's, that's me. And I'm okay being me and letting that, that be, uh, uh, a guy who identifies as a man in our culture. Thank you so much, Chris. Yeah. Thanks for the time. It's so good to connect as always. Mm -hmm.